Claire from stampingbees.co.nz, an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd really like to follow on with the theme that I have done for the last couple of videos and run over a technique with you. We recently had an extravaganza here in Auckland, New Zealand, and we did this technique. Now I'm not 100% sure what it's called, but I'm going to call it the stamp and spritz technique. Uh, it really does give a new and different effect. You're just going to ink up a stamp and spray it. Um, so I'll do that with you. I won't make up the card in its entirety. I will just show you this on a couple of bits of glimmer paper, but I will show you some projects that I have made with this technique. So let's flip over and let's get started. So yes, this technique, not sure of the official um, name of it, but we've decided to call it either the stamp and spritz technique or the ink and spritz technique, something to that effect. So you'll understand more in a minute when we walk through it. But just to show you a couple of cards that I have made with this, we used this at our, or taught this, sorry, at our extravaganza recently, and we have used that technique with the trees. So I will show that some um, an easel card. So it just pops up on there. It's just such a beautiful picture that we thought it was worthwhile to pop up on an easel. And so there's that one with the trees. And I've also done this one, which will I'll show you the beautiful friendship um, card. So that flower and the leaves have been done with this technique. So basically, it just gives a little bit more of um, a softness to the stamp that you're stamping. If you wanted something just to look a bit softer without the harder lines, then this is a great technique to use. It just offers you something a bit different to do as well. So let's get started. So I'll show you first of all with the one that we did at our extravaganza. So this is the tree with the landscape out of the snow front stamp set from the holiday catalogue. So the most important thing to do, to remember when you're doing this, I've just got some paper here somewhere. The most important thing is that you use a dauber to ink up. So I will grab the two colours I want. I actually don't want the one I want. Here it is. Uh, old olive. And, and um, seaside spray. Love seaside spray. So I'll pop that one over there. We will be using that one, but just not at the moment. And the other thing to remember is always start off with your lighter colour then and then go to your darker colour. I did mark these, which is interesting because these have been marked with the label from the ink. And you can see that the actual colours that are on the top of the door bar become quite different than what you have been using from the ink pad. So this is Seaside Spray and this is Old Olive and that looks blue and that looks purple. So very interesting. Uh, so let's start off with our light colour. So I'm just going to dauber it up. Now, the other thing to remember is that when you are, oh, I'm just going to reach over here, when you're daubing, you actually can't see the ink. I'm just reaching for my phone, which I should have had out, sorry. Uh, when you're daubing up your ink, your stamp, sorry. When you're daubing up your stamp, you can't see the ink. So that looks as if I've not put anything on there at all. So don't sort of get misled with that. And then the next one is the green. So it doesn't matter if these two overlap even. You want them to blend together a bit. So I'm just gonna pop that on. Okay. So there is my, so I'm just using shimmery, shimmery white paper, which is fantastic for watercolouring. It's not as um, intense 
as the watercolour paper. So basically what watercolour papers do is they let you move the ink around uh, before it sort of soaks in, which is fantastic. It just lets you do those colours. So the other thing that you need to do, and you won't be able to see me, is you turn away and just spritz this very uh, lightly, a couple of spritz from a distance. Now I won't do it in, on top because the you get everything covered in water and etc. So I'm just turning away and I'm just going to spritz it a couple of times. And then, so not much. And then I'm going to pop that on here. Now, initially, when you look at it, you think, oh, oh no, something went wrong. That doesn't look quite right. But if you, it, it'll only take a moment, as you watch it dry, you can see some of the detail comes back into place and the ink evens out and it doesn't look like a blobby mess. But look how soft and gorgeous that is. See how the ink now, it's blended and it's uh, drying out and it's just, just gorgeous. So with that card, that technique was perfect for the background with the two deer being the main the main focus of that card. So that is the tree and the landscape. So the next one we will do is a fern. Fern from, and I'll take away the, from the Daisy Lane. So this is a great stamp for people from New Zealand, like myself. It is like our silver fern. So we just love it. It's, um, it's really great to see something like that in the stamp sets. So that's just shimmer white again with the fern from the Daisy Lane. So I'm just going to use for this one Pear Pizzazz and Shaded Spruce. So just two colours again, a lighter and a darker one, starting, <coughs> starting with the lighter. Ouch, dear. Not good trying to open it up from the from the wrong end. I've got the wrong wrong ink pad anyway. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna start off with Pear Pizzazz. Okay. So I'm just going to ink. You do see it a little bit more with the red rubber stamps, the ink. Now mainly wanting that light colour on the tips. And now I will use the darker colour just to run up the middle. And this is shaded spruce. So I'm just going to run that up the middle of the fern. And this will hopefully give it some shading. If you can see that, so just running up that dark bit in the middle and the light peppers as is on the extremities. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to spritz it. So I'm going to hold it out, hold it out like that and just give it a couple of spritz. Not too, not too close because we don't want um, big blobs of water. We just want, we just want it to be soft. So stamping on, and look at that, beautiful. It's soft, it's still got a, uh, bits of water, they're gonna dry out, but it just gives that gorgeous shaded effect of the fern, and it's soft. So you can just see as it's drying, all the detail comes back. Fantastic. So that's that one, and the next one I'll show you is the stamp from Beautiful Friendship, uh, the, the flower there. I thought that was a good one. I have done a couple here. I'll show you. Um, I used purple with this one. I did spray, spritz it a bit with some water, but I didn't, afterwards, I didn't really like that effect. But I have used the purple, uh, not purple, posy. I think it was a Highland Heather, actually, um, and the uh, Rococo Rose on this one. 
but yeah, I didn't. I started again because I didn't like didn't like it with watermarks through it. And I also did this one, this one here, but that was yeah didn't quite turn out either. So just shows you it's a little bit of trial and error. If you do it the first time and you're not happy, then just give it another go until you are happy. I do quite like the purple blending into the pink, but in the end I went for uh, Blushing Bride, the Blushing Bride and the Rococo Rose. But we will do that now. And I will bring this back again. And get my last piece of paper. There we go. And oops, I have got a cocoa rose and blushing bride. That's a bit of glitter in that one. Okay, so we're going to start off with the light colour. Starting off with the light colour. Good ink. So once again, you won't be able to tell that this is inked up. It's um, quite misleading because you can't see where you have placed the ink. So it's a good idea to go over two or three times just to make sure that you've covered the areas that you want, especially on a bigger stamp like this. It's good to just ensure you've covered the areas. Doesn't matter if you go into the middle a bit where you're going to be adding the darker colour because it will blend. And then I just get a new dauber. And then I'm just going to focus on the darker colour, just round in the areas that I wanted it to be. Though, as I've um, just said, it will sort of blend in together. So, and I mean, if you've missed a bit, then you can just do it again. And it's fun having a go. So, I, once again, I'm going to spritz this about this distance. And just light spritz, not big things of water, not big blobs of water. Of course, you know what I mean by things, of course. Now, that's what I was talking about. Look at that. You think, oh, no, that's terrible. Um, I don't know what, I, you know, you, you'd want to start again. But you watch as this dries, that really does um, change and become a lovely stamp. Except there's a hair on there. I don't know if you can see that, but obviously I'm not going to be taking it off at the moment. Um, but yes, somehow there's a bit of a, a hair there. Just a tiny one. But I'm also going to add some leaves. So I'll just give that a second to dry. And I'll see if I can find my little... my tool, my little favourite tool. I'm not even wearing a fluffy, a fluffy top or anything. I don't know where that's come from. Hopefully, I'm not gonna. But see, as that's drying, you can see as that's drying, that's evening out. There's no big blobs, and I've probably just made a bit of a blob there now because I've been trying to get that hair off. But just you can see there that it's it's just evens out and it's lovely and smooth. And we will add some leaves. So I'm um, just sort of doing this to, to show you the technique. So obviously you would add whatever you wanted for your card that you're doing. Uh, colours that you wanted to, to focus on. So I'm going to use Old Olive and... So Old Olive and... What was the other one? Uh, soft Sea Foam. That was it. Old Olive and Soft Sea Foam. And so starting off with the light one. Just going to just dauber up that a little bit. Especially the edges. And the tips. Then I'm going to grab a bit of Old Olive. 
and just gently pop it up the middle, not trying to cover the whole stamp. I don't want to uh, and lightly spritz it. Where should I put these? I'll put that one there. And once again, it looks blobby, but we'll watch it as it dries. <clears throat> okay, so once again, soft sea foam. Oops, trying to throw it away. And just up the middle there. Bit of the dark old olive, a quick spritz. I always seem to get the first one on me every time. There we go, and I'll do one more with this one, which is just the two leaves. So you can change it up. Um, you can make them a little bit darker or lighter, depending on what you want it to look like. Like I might add um, just a little bit more dark on this one. To show you that you can vary the color. It's a bit hard to be exact though, so you wouldn't um, want to try and, you know, because as, as you wet them and they blend together, but, um, yeah, so I did that one a bit darker. You can see, the, but the light, uh, the tips are still light, which is perfect. So I'll put that to one side, and I'll just get the Wapoko Rose back again to do the centres. Now I did, uh, when I was doing this, thought, oh, I'll just stamp, I'll just stamp them without um, the spritzing, but it actually didn't look, didn't look good. Um, and, but you have to be quite careful that you don't actually put too much water because it's quite small little dots and it can turn out to be a bit of a blob, as I found out. Um, so let's pop that aside. I'm always renowned for, for uh, getting ink on my projects or putting my arm in my, in my ink or something like that. So we'll start off with this one, give it a bit of an ink, put that there, I'm going to spritz it, just making sure that it's a very light one. And popping that there. Go and I'll do this one as well. Once again. Pour it up. So it doesn't, I uh, have tried it, I think I said at the beginning, with just inking up on the ink pad, and it really doesn't, I mean, you can definitely have a go yourselves, but it actually didn't seem to create the colours as well. So there we go. Done. So nice and soft and blended colours. So a perfect way to blend colours onto directly onto a stamp, which is a fantastic technique to have up your sleeve, so to speak. Um, mind you, I think we'd have to be wearing pretty big sleeves, all these amazing techniques that we can utilise. There's always something new and exciting to learn. So that's the fern with the blended greens and the landscape and the trees and the beautiful friendship flower. So... That's just doing exactly that with the daubers and the spritzing. And that is a card that I made with that technique for this one. And this, I'm just going to reach over because I've popped it way over there, is the Christmas one we made at Extravaganza recently. So I hope you've been... Um, enjoyed. I hope you think you can use it. Give it a go. Have a couple of practices. As I say, initially it looks uh, not so good when you stamp it, but as it dries, it 
it really does blend in and it is fantastic. So do try. Please comment and let me know how you go. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care. Happy crafting.